Hello everyone, today we are doing my February wrap up. I should be super speedy with this because we are still on the theme of quality over quantity. I'm definitely taking much longer reading each book that I pick up, which is kind of on purpose, kind of accidental, but I do have a few gems in here, a few that I didn't love, um, mostly audiobooks. I feel like I'm just struggling to find audiobooks that I'm really enjoying, so I'm on the hunt if you have any recommendations, but a few real gems. Um, I am a little bit tired today. Marco was nursing a killer hangover, and I feel fine myself, but I have also been napping all day, eating a disturbing amount of Scandinavian swimmers, and I'm trying to rally myself. Um, with that said, let's jump into the six, five and a half books <laughs> I read in February. Um, a bunch of these I've also mentioned in other videos, but all the same, the first book was um, a book that I listened to, and that is An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. I will insert the book here. So this is an author I have read a few times previously, one with The Deep, um, which I absolutely loved. I read it in 2020 now, um, and it's a really, really thin, almost like short story. It's incredible. Um, and then last year I read Sorrowland and really didn't enjoy it. So this is kind of like my third attempt to see which one was more um, accurate in terms of my enjoyment. And um, I have to say I didn't love it and I so wanted to because all the elements were there for a book that I should have loved. And I don't know if I enjoyed it less because I listened to it or if I would have actually disliked it more if I physically read it, but the premise, sorry, I need energy. And I think even though I didn't love An Unkindness of Ghosts, I will keep reading their books because they have such genius ideas. I don't always love the follow through or like the actual plotting of the book. I think why The Deep worked for me um, is because it was like, a short story almost it was like a hundred pages so even though it didn't have enough time for there to be like loose ends I feel like Sorrowland it got too messy and all of the different elements didn't kind of tie up at the end it just felt like almost unfinished and I felt a similar way about an unkindness of ghosts but the premise was so so incredible so we are set on a ship which is an actual like ship, indicative of a slave ship, but it is also a spaceship, and it's called Matilda. Um, and another layer of genius in this book is that each deck of the ship is, um, it's indicative of like the antebellum south, so the bottom deck is the black residents of the ship, they're freezing to death, they're not receiving medical care, this is where Aster, our main protagonist, lives, and then as you move up, um, people are endowed with more and more rights, and then I forget what the man who rules the entirety of Matilda is called, but um, they are terrifying. And Aster has like more rights than other people of her deck because she's a healer and she works with the doctor of the ship, so she actually gets to explore more of the ship than other people um, of her same deck, of her same community. Um, Aster is kind of trying to uncover the secrets of Matilda because this ship has been on path, on chart for this promised land for generations and her mother before her was studying this, like why are they still here? What is this promised land? Where are we actually sailing in the sky to? Um, so she is trying to uncover those secrets, reading through her mother's journals because her mom committed suicide and Aster was really, really young. Um, but I feel like why I didn't enjoy this book is it felt like almost unfinished, like it felt like it wasn't done being written um, because a lot of things just didn't, they weren't fleshed out enough. Like each deck again has like different gender politics and they have almost different languages, which makes sense because they're all different cultures and communities that are confined to these different spaces. But the reasoning behind that wasn't fully formed or explained. Um, but I still am gonna like keep reading River Solomon because the ideas are so, so inventive. Like The Deep, you should definitely read The Deep if you haven't already. It's again, like 100 pages, and it's about these mermaids who are ancestors of 
pregnant women who were thrown off of slave ships. Um, and like this whole new community and species was formed from these women. And it's beautiful. It's about like the inheritance of trauma and the language of memory. And it was incredible. Like I, I literally think about that book all the time and I might reread it, but an unkindness of ghosts just felt like unfinished. I'm gonna keep reading River Solomon because the ideas are incredible. AK Blake Moore's The Manning Tree Witches. So this is right up my alley. It's 1640s in Puritan England. The witch hunt craze is running amok and it's based on a few real life figures, specifically Matthew Hopkins. He was known as the witch finder general and he shows up in this town called Manning Tree where a young woman, Rebecca, lives with her widowed mother and um, they are all eventually accused of being witches. So it's this group, Rebecca, her mother, and a bunch of older women and their daughters um, because witch, being a witch runs in genetic lines as we all know. Um, so eventually these women kind of all get rounded up and accused together and a lot of the book is actually set during their imprisonment um, and Rebecca is appealing to Matthew Hopkins. Um, so a lot of it she's kind of pulled out of their imprisonment and questioned and has the opportunity to um, claim innocence and the fact that her mother forced her into it. But all that to say, this book was a joy to read. I loved it so, so much. I mentioned in another video that it felt like what um, Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Wit Witch by Rivka Galkin felt like, but a lot more of like the actual historical context. It was so, so interesting, so engaging. This group of women th that are all in prison together, they have such like good banter, um, and they're all really quirky and troublesome. Um, I don't have too much else to say about it other than the fact that I would highly recommend it. I really enjoy like the witch hunt craze books. I feel like I've read them in all different settings, but this was one of my favorites. And it's just like about a bunch of quirky women who are doing their utmost to fuck with the system while also kind of drowning within it. So I really, really, really liked it. I would highly recommend. Then we jump to a book, um, very different in tone. And again, I talked about this book in another video, um, so I will not spend too long on it, but that is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. So this is much loved, please ignore the atrocious cover, um, but we are following a man, Cyril, I, I feel like I can't say his name, um, an Irish man, and we are following him from his birth all the way to um, his death, essentially, and basically all of these heartbreaks that are connected to different stages of his life. He's a gay man, he grows up in Ireland, um, tough, yeah. Um, so we're setting out in the 60s, I believe, I think that's when he's born. Um, and we start out with his mother, which I really enjoyed that little element of like his background because Cyril is an orphan. His mother got pregnant with him when she was like a teenager and she was essentially kicked out of her community by this horrific priest and um, kind of set out on her own. And Cyril is brought up by these two strange and quirky and tough, tough going people. Um, and he didn't receive a lot of love. He was super isolated in his childhood and he encounters this young boy named Julian um, and they become fast best friends and we're kind of following them throughout their childhood into their young adulthood and um, Cyril is hopelessly in love with Julian but for the reasons that I mentioned of him being in Ireland in the 60s, 70s, and 80s he doesn't um, know how to share the fact that he's gay with Julian, so he hides it for a really long time. I'm sorry if you can hear all of these sirens. And through a series of really traumatizing events, he actually ends up leaving Ireland, and then we follow him in all different um, generations of his life. So this book really tugs at the heartstrings, I think, a little bit too often. Um, it is what I would say, like, a book that's really there to, to get an emotional reaction out of you, but I, like, fine, I, I don't care. Like, I still really enjoyed the story. I think Cyril was a really engaging character to follow. I loved that we followed him throughout his entire life. We saw all different decades of his life and how he really grew and changed um, and came to him, accept himself and form this really beautiful relationship with this man named Bastian. Again, I feel like I can't pronounce any of these names, um, but it was 
soon after the book kind of picked up and Julian and Cyril are now in their like young adulthood, it's like one trauma after the next after the next. So this book is devastating in a lot of ways. Um, and the end I didn't love, but I would really, really recommend it. Um, I think John Boyne does a really good job of exploring Irish culture at the time. Um, and then we end up all the way in New York City during the AIDS epidemic. So it's really kind of a, a sweeping, sweeping novel. Um, but all with like our one main character to love and to root for. And I would recommend it. It's a little bit corny, but beautiful. And I was invested throughout. And it's like 600 or so pages. So this is why I'm spending much more, much more time with each book. But I'm loving it. And then, again, I've talked about all of these books, guys. So I don't even know if you need to watch this video <laughs> because I've mentioned these before. Um, but I read The Strange Bird by Jeff Vandermeer, which is a short little novella set in the Bourne universe. So same as Bourne and Dead Astronauts in a world where it's like a dystopia. There was this company that was bioengineering animals. I've said all this many times before, but if you are not already familiar, and in this iteration of the Bourne universe, we are following a creature. She is called the Strange Bird. She goes through it in this book. I cried at the end. It was fucking beautiful. There was like, this book is really quiet and you really are exploring the universe through the strange bird's eyes. She's grown up in a factory where she was horribly abused. She's kidnapped, put back together. She is compiled of many different things, machine, human, animal. Um, and she has this very special soul at the center of it, of her. So I loved this. I don't want to spoil anything, but it was stunning. And you actually could read this separate from the other two books if you just want to start with something really quick and fast. Um, there are a few characters that make an appearance that are in the other two books in the same world, but The Strange Bird stands alone and I think you will enjoy it without having all the other context. It was a beautiful story. It's Vandermeer's like his same hold strong, hold true elements of um, human interaction with nature and what we leave behind. And that's all I will say, because it's only like 100 pages and I don't want to spoil it, but this cover is everything. You already know I'm printing this and putting this on my wall. Marco is agreed. Then, last, books that I, last book that I physically read, um, Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century by Kim Fu. This is a short story collection. Of like the 12 stories, there was only one that I didn't really, really enjoy. Um, it's incredible, it plays with the weird and the wonderful and the uncomfortable and kind of the, the liminal spaces of humanity. Um, it has kind of that like techno futurist, futuristic black mirror horror. In, the, in my other vlog where I talk about this book, I compare it to Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin because it has that same weirdness, the creeping uncomfortabilities of humanity. Um, but it really is playing with a lot of those same ideas, specifically, I will tell you my favorites, so if you read this, you can let me know if these were also your favorites. First up, Liddy First to Fly, Time Cubes, um, 20 Hours, Scissors, um, and Do You Remember Candy were my favorites that I marked. I loved every second of this. I was like, could not even put it down. I was actually listening to another book at the same time, and I just was like going back to back all these stories. They were so, so, so incredible. Kim Fu really can like, capture my attention like in a in like one sentence her first sentence of every story i was absolutely invested i was sold she tells such like a tightly wound story she really forms like this whole creeping unease within like her first paragraph it's fantastic she can write like this is like true genius writing right here and i loved it um, now, for audiobooks, I haven't had the most success, um, so I will just mention the one that I DNF'd. It was The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I know people love this book. I tried, and I tried longer than I should have, but I was just like, I was just too bored. I just couldn't do it. I only made it to, he was like still a child. So we are following a man who is like a sorcerer or a wizard, and he is living and masquerading as an innkeeper um, because he's done a lot of infamous things apparently. And this man named Chronicler goes to his inn, finds out who he is, and asks to like interview him, tell his story, and basically 
confirm or deny all of these wild rumors about himself. Um, and I just did not dig Quoth's, that's his name, the sorcerer. Um, I didn't dig his voice. He was like kind of cocky and I just, he was like, I don't want to talk about myself. I don't want anyone to know who my real identity. And then he's like really into telling his story and like wanting Chronicler to sit there and listen to all these like monotonous, uninteresting parts of his childhood. So I'm sorry. I couldn't do it. I DNF'd. Um, but yes, I'm going to go now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye everyone.